Hi, everybody. Welcome to an exciting webinar today. Um, we have Cube and Steep talking about a new way to do BI. Um, today, we have Brian Bickle and Tony Kao from Cube. And joining us from Steep is Johan Baltzar. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to go over a few quick notes. Um, you can ask us your questions at any time. Um, simply enter them in, click Submit, and we'll get those answered during the live Q&A portion. Um, the recording of this webinar will be available on demand on our events page right after the live show. And if you have any feedback, we would love to hear it. Um, simply fill out the form or the survey right after the show. And so what we're covering today, um, we're going to talk about what Cube is, um, share an overview of what Steep does, um, share our integration with Cube and Steep, and show live demos from Cube plus Steep on our integration, and then end the show with live Q&A. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Brian to get things started. Welcome, Brian. Hey, thanks, Nathan. Uh, yeah, it's good to be here with you all. Um, Thanks for uh, tuning in a little bit early this morning for um, our friends at Steep. They're over in uh, Central Europe, so we wanted to bump this a little earlier for them so as to not make the time zone too terrible. But uh, yeah, I, um, no, it's really, really great to, uh, um, to have everybody here this morning. Uh, as Nathan said, my name is Brian, I'm the uh, VP of Strategy and Alliances here at Cube, and I'm here to tell you about Cube and then get us kicked off. If you aren't familiar with Cube, and if this is your first time joining one of our webinars, uh, Cube is a universal semantic layer product. And our mission is, is really focusing on powering the next generation of data-driven applications. Um, when we think of data-driven applications, we think of those being anything from embedded analytics use cases. Maybe that is um, visualization or reporting. That's another part of an application. Um, Maybe you know, think of something like uh, your charts and graphs in Strava or on your Fitbit or uh, to anything maybe a little bit less interesting than that. Uh, we also think about how to help organizations connect all of the myriad BI tools that they have. Um, you know, maybe they've got multiple tools running around, like more legacy things like Power BI and Tableau, and maybe more modern things like Steep, which we'll talk about today. Um, and, and really, you know, centralizing them in like one use case um, and, and one data model and sort of making sure that they all, um, you know, are, are pulling from the same data with the same access controls and the same metrics. And, and then more recently, we're, we're getting into this use case that I think everybody's getting into of, of figuring out how to enable and, and power uh, generative AI use cases. And um, that's a little bit less relevant today, but that's something that, that's steep and um, or sorry, that Cube is doing uh, more and more of, and we've got a lot of information on the website about that. Um, so let's talk maybe about the the why, like why Cube exists and like the the moment that we're in. Um, you know, really, Cube is is sort of focused around solving this problem um, that we call uh, many to many data chaos. And if you think about the data industry broadly for the last maybe decade or so, um, we have this proliferation of cloud data warehouses, um, you know, these platforms like Snowflake and BigQuery and Redshift, and then uh, data lake houses, you know, which is what uh, Databricks calls these platforms, their, their data storage technologies. And we've also got, you know, traditional relational database management systems like Postgres and, and MySQL all over the place, and then potentially even like document stores like Mongo that some people may want to do analytics off of. And then we get to like more exotic things like these, um, uh, time series databases and high performance query engines, um, things like ClickHouse, uh, you know, Timescale DB. Um, so the the story on the left of the slide is that there there are more and more data sources uh, in the enterprise, and I I don't really see signs of consolidation anywhere in in data sources, and in fact we see more of a proliferation of data sources, and and at the same time, on the downstream uh, side of the equation, on the right side of our chart. We have users asking to do more and more things with all these different data sources. And, and the real problem in the middle of all that is consistency and is consistency of access control, consistency of metric definitions, consistency of data models, consistency of querying experiences and, and performance. And that is really at the heart of what Cube is trying to help uh, companies solve. 
So uh, how does Cube do that um, from a, a technology perspective and like a what's in the box perspective? When we talk about Cube, we, we really talk about four main pillars that we solve. Um, we describe them as data modeling, which every semantic layer uh, is going to do data modeling. <laughs> it's kind of hard to have a semantic layer if you don't do data modeling and if you don't do metrics definitions. And you know, this is a, a code-based um, experience. Um, there's version control uh, in there. Um, you can branch and, and uh, you know, deploy different uh, versions of your data model. You can go back and see how they've evolved over time. This is where we're going to define our dimensions, our measures, um, model our metrics. You can do this with uh, YAML, with JavaScript, with uh, Python, with some, uh, some scripting in there now. So it's quite powerful. Uh, we also have access control. Um, for us, access control is a um, JWT token uh, security context system that's really powerful for um, multi-tenancy, doing things like uh, um, role-based uh, access control. Uh, we can do row filtering. We can do things like column uh, level uh, access control and column masking for um, you know use cases where that's important. Uh, third, we have our caching technology, which um, is a two-tiered caching system um, that we call Cube Store. That's all built in uh, Rust, and it uses Apache Arrow and uh, the Data Fusion implementation of that. So, our caching technology, Cube Store, handles our aggregate-aware pre-aggregations, which means that um, if you are maybe working with a little bit slower data source, or if you just want to, you know, stop the uh, repetitive queries from running up your <laughs> cloud data warehouse bill you can employ our caching technology and um, we will uh, manage the aggregations and the roll-ups uh, necessary for all your downstream analytics for you and it's a uh, it's quite fast uh, fourth and, and last year everything leaves cube via our apis um, cube provides a rest api graphql api and a sql api that speaks postgres dialect right out of the box and um, yeah, those are all the tools that uh, that we give you to sort of um, you know build whatever your heart desires for your downstream application. And you know, again, to talk about the use cases, I mean, really think about us for embedded analytics, for uh, connecting multiple BI tools, and typically that's in like commercial and maybe larger enterprise accounts, and um, this uh, sort of emerging uh, AI agent and chatbot use case where you know we integrate with Langchain and with some other uh, AI providers for that stuff. To sort of round off on Cube, um, you know, we think that most modern data stacks would benefit from a semantic layer by you know, keeping data consistency, uh, helping keep uh, data secure via our access control um, technologies, uh, also helping improve data performance with the caching and pre-aggregation that we talked about. Um, and then at the same time, sort of get these maybe like less tangible benefits of around uh, data stack flexibility. Um, you know, it's easier to either bring a database in or take a database out if you have a semantic layer abstracting all the database connectivity and the metrics. You know, if you had if you had Cube in the middle and you wanted to migrate, say, from a Snowflake to a Databricks or back and forth, it might make your life a little easier. Um, also, um, you know, we believe that uh, providing a, a semantic layer in the middle, um, if you're building a uh, data application downstream, improves uh, developer efficiency and time to value and also helps with future proofing. Now, my last slide here before I hand it off to Johan, if you aren't quite sure like where we sit in the stack, yeah, we, we find ourselves usually to the right of your databases, your data warehouses in this diagram or your relational databases. And um, you know some things that we like to clarify, we don't really handle large scale transformations. We don't replace your ETL tool. We typically you know, work in the same room as your ETL tool, but not directly connected to them. Uh, same thing with your reverse ETL products like Census or High Touch. I get that question a lot. And uh, yeah, anything that consumes data within the enterprise typically gets pointed back towards Cube, um, to Cube Cloud, the semantic layer, as you can see in this slide. And uh, yeah, with that, I'm going to hand it off to Johan. Thank you, Brian. Good to be here and uh, talk about the new Cube plus Steep integration and how to kind of have to do BI on top of a semantic layer. So, okay, so what is, what is Steep? So Steep is a modern BI platform built natively for the semantic layer. 
and we're using this kind of new metrics-based approach to to BI, which will which we'll get into. So I think you know to start us off, uh, you know obviously like the last five years have been great, especially I think on the data engineering side of things. So we all love the modern data stack. We can you know collect data on anything and and uh, uh, do a lot of cool stuff with our data. I think we, you know, we've been thinking a lot about like the, the second part of that. It's kind of like, how do we get data out to all the people that need to, needs to use it? And I think what we're seeing is that the, as more and more companies are becoming data-driven, uh, you know, like using data is, is, is starting to become like an, something that we expect in most cases. So it's no longer something that only a few people are doing once a month. It's more like everyone is using data all the time. Uh, and it's something that people, many people need to do their, their daily jobs. And what it means for us, you know, and as data teams is that like now we, we need to serve a lot more users a lot more frequently, you know, with, with many, many different needs. Uh, and I think in, especially in data intensive, uh, companies, this can become a real challenge. So, uh, you know, you, you start to serve some people and they only come back with more questions. And then, you know, you can, it can feel like an endless struggle. Uh, and I've, I've certainly been there myself with my, my previous teams. Uh, so how do we serve our end users? What are, we usually say like there are three general approaches to, to doing BI. Uh, the first one being analysts and dashboards. So basically, I mean, hire analysts who build dashboards on request for the organization. And I think, you know, probably this is what most of us have done during the last 10 years. And it, it, it definitely works. Uh, you do need to hire analysts, of course. And I think the, you know, the downsides is that it's, it's kind of like, you know, repetitive work. Uh, and, um, you know, it's hard to provide you know, flexibility and a nice experience for, for end users. Second one is more like giving direct access to data. So, you know, allowing teams to query data directly from your data warehouse and to kind of do their own analysis and calculate numbers in their own way. Uh, and I think this can work uh, for some teams. It does require a lot more from those end users and for you to kind of, you know, uh, make sure your data model is very, very neat. Uh, but the third one, and this, this is the one of, obviously that we're excited about, is this new uh, new approach, you know, based on the semantic layer and metrics. So with this approach, you're basically giving your end users access to a metrics catalog built on the semantic layer, where they can basically do their own BI, do a lot more themselves in a kind of a flexible and controlled sandbox. Uh, and uh, this is, I mean, this is the paradigm that uh, we got really excited about. And this is what Steep is, is built entirely on, you know, to help you to, to kind of work in, this, in this, uh, this way. What we found is that it can really kind of change the collaboration between the data team and, and the business side of things, where, the, where you as a data team can kind of take a step back almost and focus on your data model focus on your semantic layer and your definitions. And then, you know, you empower all your end users uh, to do a lot more themselves, which is, which is really cool. So what does this look like? Uh, so this is where, where Steve comes in, obviously. And I usually, I like to start here to kind of explain this new way of working. Uh, and it, it, it kind of starts, so what you can do with, your, with the semantic layer, with, with, with Cube in this case, uh, you can define, you build a metrics catalog and basically ship, ship your metrics catalog to the entire company. So uh, here metrics are, you know, we've uh, been defined in cube in the semantic layer and then kind of published into steep and metrics, you know, they have a name, they're, they're kind of defined with measures and dimensions. Uh, you can, you know, provide categories. Uh, even owners, technical owners, uh, business owners, uh, and and all of this is great. All this is super nice, you know, as, as kind of a documentation thing. But I think the really cool thing is that you can now allow your end users to kind of come in here, 
kind of figure out what they need. So maybe I'm in marketing and I, I care about registrations. So then I can just click on registrations and then I can start exploring and analyzing with full freedom uh, you know, all, all by myself. So now, I mean, essentially, you know, you don't need to kind of, you know, create visualizations for your end users. Now kind of everyone can do it and, and, and do it together. So this is where we spend obviously a, a lot of time, you know, product design thinking around like, how do we make it super flexible to use metrics with all those dimensions? Uh, so you can use time grains, you can use breakdowns, you can do drill downs uh, and, and different visualizations and so on. So all of those kind of classical BI use cases that you, you, you know and love. Um, but the, the, the new thing, I think, working with metrics is like now kind of metrics is the core component, the kind of the atomic unit. And then you can kind of compose them. You can kind of combine them, right, and overlay different kind of metrics to c compare registration versus activation versus ad spend or, or whatever. You can overlay targets uh, or window functions and, and a lot more. So it's, uh, it's a very kind of fresh, kind of composable, nice way of working that, that works for, for all your, your end users. It's really, really cool. OK, so uh, what about content? So this is reports in Steep. So reports are kind of like these uh, uh, the content is steep where you can kind of combine different blocks of content. Uh, so you have, you know, all those charts, uh, tables, text, uh, very nice kind of text capabilities, and you're able to kind of combine them freely to create any kind of document. So if you used to BI, then I guess this is kind of a mix somewhere in between classical dashboards and notebooks in a sense. And, uh, if, uh, if you've used kind of Notion or Google Docs, then and the experience will feel uh, very familiar. And so we, we kind of applied the same lens here. Like we want this to work for all the, the users, all your end users. And it really does. So like it, you can give this to like a product manager or a business person, and they can get up and running in five minutes and start to create their own reporting and their own analysis, which is really cool. Again, like all of this is powered by your semantic layer. So those centralized definitions. So you can trust that all the numbers, like whatever they are, whatever, whoever has kind of produced the content, they're all going back to the same source. And if you change your metric definitions, like if you want to change, you know, your order volume or, or your revenue, you're changing that centrally. And then it will update all of the content that has ever been created you get this kind of built-in consistency, which is very, very nice. And finally, some more, more nice stuff from, from Steep. So it, it's kind of built to be cross-platform from the, from the get-go. So, uh, you know, the desktop app is perhaps the most powerful experience, but actually anything you can do in the desktop app, almost everything you can do, you can also do in the mobile app. And we found like the mobile use case is something that people don't really expect, but once they, once they get it, it, it's a very kind of engaging uh, way to, to use data. It works especially well for kind of, you know, busy executives. It's very nice. Yeah, and we were super excited about this new integration with Cube. I think, you know, because it's like, it fits so well, like it, it's, it feels like it's really made for each other, right? So with Cube, you get this powerful standalone semantic layer with all those uh, APIs and, and, and tooling around it, allowing you to define your, your metrics and code. And with Steep, you're able to kind of publish all of this and make it kind of instantly useful and available to potentially an entire organization of end users, allowing them to do all of the things they need every day and actually collaborate uh, together. So I guess in a nutshell, with this combo, you can kind of build your semantic layer in code with Cube. You can then ship a structured metrics catalog to the entire company. You can power all of your BI with consistent definitions. And then with that, empower all your end users to work with metrics together. And I think with that, it's, it's probably time for a demo. So I'll, I'll hand it over to you 
Tony for showing us how we're actually, how do we define metrics in, in Q? Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, Johan. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and get started with just a quick background on what uh, the data model is going to look like in Cube. So we've got two object types. Um, this is just from our documentation here. We've got uh, cubes and views. So cubes are going to be kind of like the underlying layer. Uh, your building blocks, um, most synonymous with like your upstream uh, data objects. So things like your, your tables for orders, line items, users. Uh, it's going to have the definitions for things like the joins and the relationships between those, the primary keys, things like that. Um, and then the views is where we really focus on the end user as far as what their experience is going to be, uh, what objects they're going to use uh, in those downstream tools. So uh, a lot of times views might be um, more of like a, it might look like more of a one big table uh, format where your, uh, your customer's um, object or customer's view is going to have a bunch of different metrics. Um, and dimensions related to the customer that then the downstream tools can use. Um, and then when we want to take a metrics first approach, like what we're doing with Steep, uh, each of our views might be its own metric, uh, or sorry, each of our metrics would be its own view. So instead of having a customer's view, we might have a bunch of different views defined um, with our different one for each of our metrics that relates to customers. So for example, um, here's another, uh, reference point from uh, from our guides around designing these metrics. Um, I'll just scroll down a little bit to the metrics first approach. So we'll, we might name the, the view itself the metric name, and we'll include the actual field, the measure that we're uh, including here. Uh, we can loop in other um, dimensions like status, city, age, gender, things from different cubes as well. Uh, and those will all appear, you know, all, at the same level um, and all usable by um, by Steep to use the uh, to split up the metric or provide the comparisons or filters. Uh, and then we want to make sure that there's also just the one date field. Um, and if we have multiple dates that this is interesting for, maybe we make a couple different metrics or sorry, a couple different views, one for each of those metrics with different time frames. Um, your the the tool that you're using at the um, at the end of the day is really going to dictate, you know, the best way to create these views. Um, but let's take a quick look at what that looks like in Cube Cloud. So here's our uh, a data model that we're going to use. Um, so we've got a few different cubes here. You might recognize like orders and users uh, from some of the demos that we do normally. But um, I'll just look at MPS responses. So if you if you're not familiar with uh, Net Promoter Score, um, it's a interesting survey questions like what what is the how likely are you to recommend uh, whatever the product or service is to a friend or family member on a scale of zero to 10. Um, and then the MPS score is actually a, a, a derived metric. So if somebody scores a nine or a 10, then it's going to be an, a positive. They're a promoter. Um, if they're a seven or an eight, then they're kind of passive. You know, they're not, they're not really going to advocate for you. Um, and if they're kind of a six or below, um, they're going to be a detractor. So they're, if people ask them about their experience, they might be, um, you know, a bit more negative around that, um, you know, not a strong recommendation. So, um, and then the net promoter score itself is an, is an average of these numbers. So there's a few different layers of the calculation here when we want to go from the responses to the actual score. So what we're doing in Cube is modeling those, um, those responses. So we're assigning, uh, we're taking the initial rating, we're assigning it a, a score. And then we're actually calculating that score um, within Cube. So we're we're rounding off the um, the scoring, multiplying it by 100, rounding it to one decimal place, uh, and then we're just providing things like descriptions, the actual title of the metric, what we what we want to be able to see in Steep um, uh, for the name, uh, and then we've got our views. So. Uh, oh, sorry, I'll also include segments. So we're able to define segments in code uh, as well to help instead of having to select, you know, all my European countries when I want to do an analysis on Europe, um, I can just create a segment here that defines all those. Uh, and then I'm able to select Europe or Americas or uh, without a segment with everybody um, to do a global view um, within the tool. So for our metrics from a customer service perspective, Here's where we have um, 
our net pro, uh, net promoter score. So the NPS score itself, we want to title that net promoter score, and we want to put a nice description in there because that's going to be visible at the end uh, for our, for the downstream tools. Um, and especially in Steep, we can use the metadata where we assign the category, we assign owners uh, to this, and uh, that allows us to filter those and, and view nicely within the Steep interface um, how that um, uh, how the metric is shown. So we're defining that one measure, we're defining one time gra time grain here, and then as many dimensions as as would apply to that measure. Uh, and then I'm also including the segments here, so we can use those within the within the app. So there's a number of different other um, metrics that we've put in here as well. So different uh, um, different names that you'll see coming up there. Um, there's a couple of these for um, net promoter score, but then there's also our cost of capital, our orders and users. But I'll go ahead and hand it off to Johan to kind of show how this uh, connects and, and uh, works over in Steep. Thanks, Tony. So, um, so now we're in Steep, and uh, uh, and uh, we have actually here connected to to Cube. So we prepared this a little bit, and uh, connected to the the Cube workspace that Tony just uh, walked us through. And so here, basically, what we're doing is just kind of pressing pressing sync here for manual sync or possibly also setting up uh, kind of automatic syncs. And then we're kind of instantly connecting to the Cube workspace. And we're, we're getting all of that metadata. And we got the connection to actually use the semantic layer in Cube to power all of, uh, all of the things that you're doing, all of the interactions you're doing with metrics and data in Steep. Uh, and all of this is, of course, like happening under the hood. So for the end users, it's kind of like it's totally, you know, they don't see kind of like how this is powered, but they just you know, they just know that there are there are metrics to be, to be used. Which is really nice. So now if we head over to our metrics catalog here in Steep, uh, we can see all of that good metadata, all of those metrics and the, the attached metadata that we've defined in our uh, in our cube workspace. So we here we have those those uh, metrics with those names, uh, the additional kind of description for each of these metrics. Also the metadata fields for category, which has this kind of special meaning for Steep that gets picked up as the category for the metric, uh, and then also the the owners if you actually have those uh, users in in your Steep workspace as well, uh, you will get those as owners. And the categories, of course, can be used to, you know, to to categorize, create some kind of structure for, for your metric, uh, which is kind of reflected on the, in the in the menu there, in your Steep workspace. All right, so let's let's try this out. So, I'm interested in in order volume. So clicking on this metrics takes me to, the exploration view uh, here in Steep for this metric, uh, and you know. Here I have all this flexibility for exploring uh, across time uh, with different visualizations and, uh, uh, and uh, analyzing in different ways. So maybe I want to change to like a, a weekly time grain or daily or monthly or whatever, I, uh, whatever I'm interested in. I can break down by those dimensions. And here is like, it's those dimensions that we defined in the semantic layer that, that gets shown here. So obviously, like you're, you're kind of curating things on the semantic layer side. And then this is what gets uh, available to all your, your end users. Uh, and I can filter and drill down on uh, any of these uh, dimension and their dimension values, and also compare different metrics to each other. So uh, again, just picking from the semantic layer. So maybe I want to check orders uh, returned here. So then we're kind of adding an additional layer here, the, uh, another metric. And under the hood, you know, we're calling the semantic layer, generating query, running the query, and uh, um, 
and, and displaying in that. So this is kind of where the composability kind of comes in. Uh, we're able to kind of combine things freely. So I can do that. If I had targets applied to the metric, I could, I could overlay that as well. Uh, there's these kind of built-in window functions as well. So maybe I want to kind of compare to previous year, previous month, rolling averages. We try to kind of add all those common use cases you have, all of that kind of reporting, all the kind of frequent analysis that we're doing again and again. We're kind of building that in as, as easy functions that, that anyone can use. It's nice. Uh, and as soon as I, I, uh, I have something that I'm interested in, I can either from this view go in and add it to a new report or an existing report. Uh, and maybe we want to go into the report side of things to see how that, how that works. So we can start by looking into this uh, report that we prepared. So this is an example, I think, you know, reports kind of serve multiple use cases in Steep. So they're great for kind of like, there's the kind of the classical dashboards. I want to kind of, you know, track my metrics over time and compare against targets. And that works really well. Um, but it also works well for more kind of reporting. Like I want to create like a document that is this kind of monthly report or weekly report. And then we're maybe we're updating the text uh, and, the, and the charts every week. Uh, and then we're kind of looking at it in meetings. Uh, but it could also be more kind of deep dive investigations or analysis. Like you, you see a drop in a metric and you want to investigate and figure out what's going on. So I think it's, it's really kind of a, like a, we found it to be a very flexible way to be uh, working with, uh, with your data and doing analysis. Uh, and I think the, the nice thing is that the, the barriers are so low. It's so easy for, for like you don't need to be a specialist at all to, to be doing this kind of content creation or this kind of analysis. It's really, really available to, to anyone. So here we have a text block with an executive summary, some, some findings here. And then we have blocks of content with, uh, with charts, uh, with some comparisons, um, and then some kind of additional information down below. Uh, here we have a table, also a very powerful way to add kind of multiple metrics next to each other and compare across time or across any kind of common dimension as well. Uh, I want to highlight the filters as well, the filter, filter functionality. I think this is where the, the dimensions really shine. So uh, all, the, all the metrics, we have this convention where like there is a, a, like a default, a main time dimension. So when you add multiple metrics here, they all share that kind of like uh, common common time dimension, so you can uh, you know use this to control at the same time, kind of control all of those blocks of content in one report. Uh, so here I can and even kind of step back in time to different periods. So here I, I just chose you know to kind of filter the entire report on quarters. Then I can use the time stepper to to step back and forth in. Time. And of course, dimensions as well. So here we added a filter for, for dimensions. So any, any of the metrics that actually have a, a dimension, uh, a country dimension, we can use this to, to, uh, to, to filter out uh, the dimensions that we're, that we're interested in. We're not choosing the wrong dimensions. Um, so that's, that's a really powerful way to make you know, it's very easy for everyone to kind of create more reports, but you can also do kind of dynamic reports that are reusable uh, uh, for, for, for many use cases. These are also, I want to highlight there are kind of like full kind of multiplayer support. It, we want to make this feel more like a kind of a modern workplace product. So the, the experience should be more like a Notion or Google Docs. And here we can see we have like two people active in the same report. If you have multiple people editing at the same time, they will show up in the document, and you can kind of see where they're, what they're working on, which blocks they're, they're kind of active on uh, right now. So it definitely supports a lot of users working, working at the same time. Um, 
so that's reports. Maybe we should just look example of adding adding a chart here. So clicking the plus button, I want to add a chart. Then I get, of course, to choose from all the, the metrics in the metrics catalog. Let's choose uh, order volume here. And maybe we want to do this uh, weekly, last six months. And we want to um, compare versus the returned orders. And maybe we want to actually sync the scales so they're, they're all on one scale. And then we can add it here. And if we want, of course, we can just drag and drop things to work with the layout. So I'll drag it up next to the table. And then, yeah, it's very kind of flexible and intuitive uh, layout, as you can see. Uh, and we made the simplification. So it's, it's either you get this kind of full width for the blocks, or you can put them next to each other for like a two, two column layout. Um, uh, works really well. Uh, sharing as well. So uh, if you have multiple users, uh, you can either kind of share reports uh, with the entire workspace, or you can have more kind of fine grained control of permissions. Uh, so if you have teams or individual users, you can kind of you know, control exactly who, who gets to see what. Uh, and there's even uh, you know, additional layers of control for, for metrics as well. So you can have kind of public and private metrics. And teams uh, is another kind of you know, way to kind of organize content for larger workspaces. So you can kind of subdivide your workspace into different teams and use them to control access, but also to customize the content and kind of the, the, the home page for, for multiple users. Um, there's a lot more to show, so <laughs> but maybe we shouldn't go through kind of every every detail, but maybe we can we can kind of save it for for the Q and A uh, to uh, to see what folks are interested to to learn more about. Um, but Steep is is kind of built to to kind of work really well, kind of scale to large organizations. So you know, 100, 500, 1,000 end users uh, works really well at the same time. I think especially with all the kind of caching layer uh, uh, built in, the experience is still snappy uh, for, for when, when you're scaling it to, to a lot of users. And, and that works both for, for the desktop and the, and the mobile apps at the same time. All right, I'll, I'll hand it back over to uh, to, to you, Brian. <clears throat> Great. Uh, yeah, Johanna, thanks for uh, taking us through Steep. And um, Tony, thanks for showing us the setup in uh, Cube and kind of proving that we, uh, we did make these tools work together <laughs> and that we're doing all the things we said we were going to do. Um, I guess the commentary I would give before we get into the Q&A is that um, you know, one at at Cube, we're we're really thankful for the uh, cooperation from Johan and the team. Um, I feel like Steep is a really really exciting BI tool and really interesting in the sort of metrics first, um, you know, sort of paradigm that they've put forward. To me, really feels like the future of where BI is going, and that um, <clears throat> that feels that feels very exciting to be a part of. So. Um, yeah, somebody who's done a lot of like the more traditional BI in my life. Um, really great to, to get to work with you on this. Um, I guess we can go ahead and move to Q&A. Did have a couple questions come in. Um, we've got one I'm going to go ahead and answer about Cube, and I'll get it out of the way, and then maybe we'll, we'll bounce some of the other ones off of the rest of the panelists here. Uh, we had a viewer ask if Cube Semantic Layer uses any ontology solution like OWL, um, and uh, to describe or classify the concepts powering the semantic layer. And what I can say is, is we don't right now, but if you are interested in ontologies or um, I guess I would say more bridging the gap between a semantic layer and maybe something like a knowledge graph, uh, drop us a line and kind of let us know what you had in mind. And um, if we can work with you on that, maybe we'll, we'll take a look at it. Um, we actually have one in here that uh, 
I, I, I will say is from a from a friend of Cube, uh, and um, they ask, uh, do you have do you have to use the metric first views approach when working with Cube plus Steep, or can Steep also work with measures from Cubes or regular views? Uh, I'm going to bounce this to both uh, Johan and Tony to talk about the exact implementation. Maybe I can start, Tony. You can fill in. Um, I think like the recommended approach that we have is that you have kind of like one view per per metric. So you have this kind of explicit way to kind of set up your uh, your metrics, um, which you know it, it, yeah, it's very kind of close to this kind of metrics first approach way of working. But we also had clients, customers that are you know, have built uh, measures and, and, and kind of used to power other use cases as well. So there is kind of like a secondary approach where you're able to kind of like, you know, use the measures uh, as kind of the more like the basis for, for uh, defining metrics. And then you're able to kind of like have multiple measures in one view, you know, specify the, the default time dimension and what other dimensions you want to use for breakdowns. And then you're, you're able to, to, uh, to publish kind of multiple uh, measures as metrics at the same time. So I, I want to kind of recommend the, the more kind of explicit approach, um, but there is definitely like a, a, a secondary approach. Um, what do you, what do you want to add? If you want to add something, Tony. I, I think, um... I mean, thinking about the, the downstream tools that, that you're going to be publishing your data model to, I think that's really where you've got a lot of flexibility with views. Um, you, you could use potentially the security model to say, hey, the Steep's going to have access to um, these, uh, our actual metrics, and then we've got another uh, SQL-based tool for, for our more aggressive uh, analysis where maybe they actually are using, you know, straight SQL uh, and we're going to um, expose a different or more um, more tabular looking data model to that group. Um, so there might be some ways to, um, I guess, distribute what that looks like. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, having just built this for the uh, this data model for our webinar here, it feels like the metrics, like building the one metric per um, or one view per metric approach, it really simplifies things as a as somebody who's building the data model. Because all I have to focus on is you know which which dimensions, which time series, um, which measure um, is you know centered around this one metric, um, and then I can uh, I can spin off uh, other metrics uh, based on that as well. Um, using that kind of as a template, but I don't have to make sure I don't have to boil the ocean or think about all the use cases. I can think focus on that one specific business metric when I'm doing my design work. So I'd say you know try to try to give it a try from the uh, building the one uh, you know one view per measure approach. Cool. I think we've uh, I think we've thoroughly exhausted that one. <laughs> Uh, I've got another one here from the audience. Um, I think this is going to be for Johan. I, th I, th I think the I think the viewer is explicitly talking about Steep here, so let's go with that context. Um, they said, with regards to sharing reports with external clients, I see that you use roles to handle access. Does that mean that clients log into the report, or can they be shared as PDF or PNG? Do you need a separate role for each external user, or do you have role-based filtering? Um, so I think right now, I mean, the you need to be a member in the Steep workspace to have access to the report, right? So I mean, it's up to you to decide like who you want to invite. But I think usually people they set up one workspace for their organization and they give most of their employees uh, access to to that. And for external uh, users, so I think right now what you can do is there's the kind of export export as PDF. Uh, you know, feature that we have, so you can kind of export it and just send it however you you want it. Um, and I think in the future we will likely build some kind of external role, so you can kind of you know invite users either as guests or or perhaps like we we are going to build like a, a public public link to report. 
somewhere uh, along those lines. But it's it's not not ready yet. But it will will get there. Yeah, and I guess I would say with the uh, interoperability between Steep and Cube, you could probably satisfy sort of like whatever uh, row level or column level security challenge you had, um, you know, outside of actual like permissions to the reports themselves, which would be in Steep. It's definitely possible uh, to set up multiple workspaces. Uh, just want to add, you know, if you do have like larger, you know, clients or partners that you want to give access to subsets of data. Uh, it's very, you know, you can have total freedom in setting up multiple workspaces and maybe you know, hooking that up to a subset of your of your semantic layer. So I think that's that's an alternative. Cool. Um, got another one here. Uh, this one again is going to be for Johan. Um, is there actually a way to view uh, underlying or row level data in Steep? Not like yet. if you are debugging no. and you want to inspect yeah. a metric, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> No, but, but I think we're thinking definitely thinking along those lines, and we're we're hearing it from from more customers. So that's that's definitely on the roadmap. I think. Okay, um, that makes sense. Uh, not, not today. Okay. Um, and another viewer asked about um, about adoption of semantic layers. They asked. Uh, they said one deterrent to adopting DBT semantic layer has been the effort to basically recreate LookML logic. Can you help me understand where Cube would fit between DBT and LookML? Will it be a third semantic layer? Does it help with this migration? Um, the interesting thing about this migration path or, or, or thinking about this is that we have run into a lot of um, situations where maybe a customer is thinking about switching from Looker and we have to do like a Looker kind of takeout. And sometimes, you know, in the steep partnership case, that might be unbundling a, a prior looker um, into like cube replacing LookML and steep replacing looker uh, for the visualization component. Um, so for just for this scenario, we actually recently, not recently, it's been a few months back, released a LookML to cube converter um, that can help with a lot of the, uh, like programmatically converting that LookML logic. So, um, yeah, I mean, if that's interesting to you, um, if you're still still on and you want to know more about that, definitely reach out to us, and we're we're happy to happy to chat with you about that. Cool. Um, yeah, I think we're kind of. Oh, we got one more here. Uh, can steep reports be defined in code and stored in version control? Um, not yet. No, um, I think like we're focusing on allowing all end users to kind of create their own reports. Um, so kind of taking that burden off the data team in most cases. Um, so um, that's kind of the, it's, it's so kind of flexible and quick to, to create reports. So we have not kind of looked into, you know, um, defining them in code. Um, okay, well, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the Q&A. Um, I do have kind of one more to maybe set the stage. Um, yeah, Johan, can you maybe tell us a little bit more about how someone might learn more about Steep or, or try it for themselves? Um, you know, here's where you can plug the, the URL and how to get hold of your sales team and all those things. <laughs> yeah, so, so just visit uh, our site at uh, steep.app. Uh, and uh, there's a lot, lot of material and, and resources there. And our help center is also good. Um, help center and blog, I think, is, is good, good resources. There you can also kind of request and, and get in contact. Steep is also, you know, as a modern tool, we want to be, you know, fully self-service. Uh, so there's a free tier. You can get started in, you know, in, in minutes um, and, um, and uh, hook up cube as well. Uh, and, and totally try it out for, for yourself, even with the, with, there's a demo data set up as well. So it's nice and quick to, to kind of explore for yourself and try out all the, all the nice uh, functionality. And yeah, please, please get in touch. We, we like to talk to, to data leaders and, and practi practitioners. Right. Thank you, Johan. Um, and thank you, everybody, for attending our webinar today. 
um, as uh, Johan was talking about, um, as well as Brian and Tony, um, we do have some resources you can um, double click into to learn more about um, Cube as well as Steep and our integration. Um, I would suggest looking at our Cube blog on the Cube and Steep integration as well as uh, the Steep one as well. Um, thank you everyone, have a great day or night um, and we'll see you next time, bye.